Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. Shabbos DAF Kuf Lamed Aleph has two primary sugyas. The first one is discussing the halachas of Eruv Chatseris and Shitufei Mevois, which we will briefly introduce again. And then the second one is referring to where Rabbi Elazar derives his opinions about doing machshire mitzvah, preparing for a mitzvah that you're allowed to do on Shabbos, where does he derive his halacha that you're allowed to violate Shabbos even to prepare for the mitzvah? And there are going to be a number of different examples of a number of different mitzvahs. We're going to figure out where Rabbi Lazar has a source for each one, and why he doesn't learn one from the other, why he needs a separate source for each one. So first of all, on the subject of Eru V'chateras and Shitu Femifos, let us remind ourselves what these things are. So in the days of the Gemara, there were houses, houses, multiple houses opened into the same chater, the same courtyard, and multiple courtyards opened into the same mava, which is an alley, and then the alley usually reached at its end into Rosh Hashanah. So, Midoraisa, you are allowed to carry in all these places besides for Rosh Hashanah, and they were all considered to be Rosh Hashanah, and you're allowed to carry in all of them, and from one to the next. Our said, not so fast. You're not allowed to carry from a house into a chater, Unless you have an Eruv Chatseris. The function of an Eruv Chatseris is, is to combine all the houses and the space that's shared by each owner in the Chatseris, to combine them all into one consortium, and then it's all considered one Rishos, and you're allowed to carry between them. You're not allowed to carry from one person's Rishos to another person's Rishos. That's combining houses and Chatseris. There's a separate but very parallel thing, which is combining different chaseras. That means that you have multiple chaseras which open into one mobile, into one alley, and you want to combine the rishos of the various chaseras to be able to use the mavoi, to be able to carry throughout the mavoi, or from the chaser into the mavoi, from the house to the chaser to the mavoi. All these things are required, and that procedure is called shitufei mavoi. So the Gemara here discusses what happens if you have a mavoi, which you did not do shitufan. So you should not be allowed to carry from any of the other zones, from the chatzar or from the house, into the movi itself. The question is, are you allowed to carry something within the movi, from one end to the other, if it was already in the movi when Shabbos began? So the Gemara says that Rabbi Zeyra says the name of Rav, that it depends whether or not you have an Erev Chatzeris. If you did an Erev Chatzeris, which means you can carry from the house into the chatzar and around the chatzar, then you cannot move this item from one end of the movi to the other. If ever you don't have an air of chatzeris, then you are allowed to move things from one end of the mavoi to the other. Meaning, an air of chatzeris excludes carrying in the mavoi unless there is a shitufei mavoi. And the world wants to know why. So the world is going to offer uh, one and a half potential approaches, which it will reject, and then it'll come to a new one. So the world's first approach is as follows: Rav holds like the opinion that says that the only way you're allowed to carry within a mavoi is if you have a uh, symbol at the end of the Mavi where it meets Rishas Arabim, to show that you're not going to step into Rishas Arabim, of course, and you also have to have multiple houses and multiple courtyards that open into this Mavi. Multiple houses per courtyard and multiple courtyards per Mavi, at least two. Now, the situation is as follows. When you have an Erev Chatseris, what ends up happening is that you can carry from the house to the Chatser. Therefore, the chatzar becomes part of the property of the house, and it's no longer considered to be a separate entity. It's considered to be bato to the house itself. Therefore, in halacha, we view it as if you have only houses opening directly into the mavi with no chatzeris, because the chatzeris are part of the houses now. Therefore, you have no chatzeris, and now let's say you can't carry uh, within the mavi, even if you have a symbol at the end of the Mavoy. Now, the Gemara says that's very nice, but it wouldn't make sense because then, even if you do not have an air of Chatseris, you still shouldn't be allowed to carry in the Mavoy. And you're telling me that that's only true if you do have an air of Chatseris. Why should you not be allowed to carry in the Mavoy if you do not have an air of Chatseris? Simple. Because you can't carry into the Chatser. You cannot carry from the house into the Chatser. If you can't carry from the house into the Chatser, that means that there is no way to carry anything from the house directly in, into the Mavoy. You can't even get it into the Chatser. You can't get it out the door. So if you can't get it out the door, then we should view as if the houses don't exist. You can't. The houses no longer open into indirectly into the mavoi because you can't get from the house to the mavoi with anything in your hand. Therefore, it should be viewed as if you have only chazeras opening into the mavoi with no houses. In that situation, again, you don't have the minimum requirement that Ravals with is multiple chazeras and multiple mo- and m- m- multiple houses opening into the mavoi. So the Gemara therefore says that if this explanation is correct, then Rav should not allow you to carry within the Mavoi 
whether you have an Erev Chatseris or whether you don't have an Erev Chatseris, so we need a new explanation. So the Gemara says, hold on, let me try to salvage this one. Maybe the situation is where everybody relinquished their ownership in the Chatser. Okay, so you, you have, there's no Erev Chatseris, and everybody relinquished their ownership in the Chatser. In a situation like that, the person who owns the... I'm sorry, almost everybody relinquished their ownership in the Chatser. There was one house that is allowed to retain ownership in the Chatser. Everybody else relinquished their ownership and said, no, it's his Chatser. Therefore, that guy from that house, he's allowed to carry from the house into the Chatser because nobody else owns it. It's not shared. The only reason you can't carry from your house into the Chatser is because the house is your property and the Chatser is shared property. Now, it's not shared. Everybody relinquished their ownership. That guy from that house can carry into the Chatser. He can then carry into the Moe. Now, what's the situation? You have an area of Chatseris. You also ha- uh, you do not have an area of Chatseris. I'm sorry, you don't have an area of Chatseris, but you also have a situation in which you're allowed to carry from a house into the Chatser. Therefore, we should now view it as if there is Chatseris and houses opening into the Mavi. We should no longer say, ah, well, you, you, we're going to view the houses as if they don't exist because you can't carry from the houses into the Chatser and certainly not into the Mavi. It's not true. There's one person who, who could carry from his house into the Chatser into the Mavi. And therefore, you wouldn't be allowed to carry in the. Uh, therefore, you should be allowed to carry in the mavi itself, because you um, you don't have an erev chaseris, but everybody relinquished their ownership. So the gemara says not so fast. We said the rav needs multiple houses, and you only have one. The only person whose house can is considered to open into the chaser into the mavi is the one person who everybody else relinquished their ownership in the chaser to him, but nobody else. So therefore, Rav would still say that this it doesn't work, and we're back to our original question, that even if you have no area of concerns, Rav should still say you're not allowed to carry within the Mavoy itself. So the Gemara tries to save this again. The Gemara says, okay, you know what? Um, everybody relinquished their ownership to two people. Well, you can't be two people at the same time, because then you still, the Chatzar is still a shared property, and you still can't carry from the house into the Chatzar. So the Gemara says, no, it works as follows. They take turns. The first half of the day, one person owns the chutzer. The second half of the day, a different person owns the chutzer. Therefore, each half of the day, it's only owned by one person. And therefore, he's allowed to carry from his house into the mavoy, and you should be uh, you should be allowed to carry within the mavoy itself. The Gemara says, but that does not help, because you still, at each time of the day, you still only, you still only have one house opening into the chutzer. Yeah, true. Throughout the day, there will be two houses, one in the morning and one in the afternoon, and there will be different houses, but... It, it, at any given time, there's only one. So at any given time, Rav should still say, if you're correct, that you cannot carry from the house into the Chatzar, into the Mavi, and therefore you also can't carry within the Mavi itself if you uh, if you have no Erev Chatzar. So the Gemara therefore drops this, and the Gemara says, Rav does not hold of this entire thing. Rav, holds, Rav does not hold of this opinion that you have to have multiple houses and multiple Chatzaris. You don't have to have any of that. Any amount of houses or Chatzaris is enough. If that's true, why is it that you're only allowed to carry from one end of the Mavi to the other when there is no heir of Chatseris? Because the entire problem with carrying within a Mavoi is when you have houses. Rav holds the opinion of Rabbi Shimon, which is in the Gemara Masechus Ervin, which we'll see shortly. Rabbi Shimon holds that the only problem with carrying with from a chutzer to a mavoy or to a roof or to a field or to any of these things, really you should be allowed to carry in all those areas and from one to the next. The only reason you can't is because there's a house that opens into the chutzer and that makes it like um, the chutzer itself has the status of a house. You find things which belong to the house there, you can carry into the chutzer and therefore this chutzer has multiple owners. It has houses. It has one house. It has another house. And there are multiple people who can carry into it. And therefore, there are multiple people that can carry into the Mavoy. There are multiple people that can carry further. Anywhere where there's multiple people that can use it, it's shared property. You cannot carry from private property to shared property. That's what Erev Chatseris is all about. Therefore, in a situation where you have an Erev Chatseris, so there are multiple people who could use the Chatser to carry into the Chatser, and there is mul- you'll find things from everybody's house in the Chatser, it's shared property. And therefore you can't carry from one end of the Mavi to the other, because the Mavi is also shared property. You can't carry from one person's property to another, and you can't even carry within shared property, because you're going from one person's property to another. Therefore, if you have an Erev Chatseris, the Chatser is shared, the Mavi is shared, you can't carry within it. If, however, there is no Erev Chatseris, then the house is considered non-existent because you can't get out of the house. 
can't get anything out of the house. And there is no shared property in the chutzr because nobody can use the chutzr because he can't carry in it. There's no shared property in the movie because nobody can carry anything from the house to the movie. The movie doesn't connect to the house. Therefore, in a situation like that, where there's no chutzeris, Rav holds you're allowed to carry from one end of the movie to another because the movie is no longer shared property. In short, in summation, Rav says, if you want to bring an object from one end of a movie to another, it has to be that the movie is not shared property. How do you do that? Well, we know you can always do shitufi mavois. And Rav is telling you that if you didn't do shitufi mavois, there's another solution. And that's if there's no evchaseris, because then you can't get out of the house into the movie with anything. You cannot use the movie, and therefore it's not considered shared, and you're allowed to carry from one end of the movie to the other. Okay, that concludes this discussion. Now the Gemara starts another discussion, which is going back to Rabbi Eliezer's halacha. We've seen that Rabbi Eliezer said that if you need to do a mitzvah on Shabbos, which you're allowed to be mechal Shabbos for, such as bris milah, you're also allowed to do anything else to prepare for the mitzvah. You're allowed to go, chop down trees, to make a fire, to burn wood, to make steel, to make a knife, to carry to Rosh Hashanah to be able to do the mitzvah of Milah Tzav. Now the Gemara understands that this applies to many other areas, all other mitzvahs which you can do in Shabbos. So you're allowed to do their machshir and their preparations in advance as well. Now the Gemara here quotes Rabbi Rava in the name of Rebekah, and it says that there are exceptions. The Gemara is not saying what the exceptions are, yet, but there are exceptions. There are some things it doesn't apply to. Rabbi Elazar does not have a general rule that applies everywhere. That uh, that in all situations you're allowed to do machshirin in, on Shabbos itself. There are exceptions. How do we know? Because you need a special source for each one. How do I know? I need a special source for each one. Because in the mitzvah of Shtei Halechem, Rabbi Eliezer has a special source. What's Shtei Halechem? Shtei Halechem is a mitzvah to bring two special chalices, carbonis, on Shavuos. If Shavuos falls out on Shabbos, you're allowed to bake them on, on Shavuos. And you're allowed to prepare, you're allowed to cut the grain, you're allowed to do anything else you need to do on Shavuos itself. That is Rabbi Eliezer's opinion. Of course, the Chachamim argue on all of this, and they say you can't do any things which you could do before Shabbos. You, can't, you aren't allowed to to do them on Shabbos itself. But, Rabbi Lord says he can. But he has to have a special source for it. What's the special source? He says he has a Gzera Shava between the carbon Oimer and the carbon Shayalachim. The carbon Oimer involved bringing barley that was cut. Shayalachim involves bringing two loaves of bread. They could both end up being on, Sh- on Shabbos. And the Gemara says, just like we know that carbon Oimer, you're allowed to cut down on Shabbos, you're allowed to actually harvest the grain on Shabbos. Therefore, uh is allowed to as well, because it's Gzair Shav between the two. Now, the Gemara says, the Gzair Shav has to be from the extra words. What, first of all, what are the words of the Gzair Shav? It says, Hava, it says, bringing, discussing both the Oimer and the Yishtayalach Matruas. It says, bring, should bring the bread or the grain to the Beis HaMikdash. Um, the, now that's the link between the two. Now the Gemara says that link has to be extra words because if it's not extra words, um, I can show you that the uh, mitzvah of Emir is stronger and stricter and more likely to be able to push away Shabbos than the mitzvah of Shtei Alachem. You wouldn't be able to learn from Emir to Shtei Alachem. And we know that Rabbi Elazar holds whenever I can have a pure Chan Xerah Shav, whenever I can push away Xerah Shav by showing that one of the two is stronger than the other. You can't use the Gershav unless it's extra words. So the Gemara says it is extra words in the Pasuk describing the Eimer. It says, And then right afterwards it says, It doesn't have to say, It could just say on the day that you bring it. Um, it could just say, um, It doesn't have to say that you bring it. And therefore it says, twice. Now the Gemara says that's only one end. Where do you see extra words? By Shtei uh, Alechem also. The Gemara says, yes, there is an extra word, Taviyu there. It says, Mimosh Vesechem, Taviyu, Lechem, Tenufa. You don't have to write that because we just said earlier, they craft them, that you should be bringing it to the base of Migdash. Therefore, both are extra. That's Rabbi Eliezer's source that you can have Machshirin of Shtei Alechem performed on Shabbos. Uh, and uh, it's learned from Karma Now, Now, the Gemara wants to know what is excluded. So the Gemara tries a few different options over here. Lulav Sukkah Matzah Shoifer. The Gemara says none of them can be excluded because we know that Rabbi Elazar have a price that it clearly holds that they're machshirin preparing those five things, those four things. Lulav Sukkah Matzah and Shoifer. All of them you are allowed to do their machshirin. You are allowed to prepare for that mitzvah on Shabbos itself. If you have to do the mitzvah on Shabbos, all of those can end up being done on Shabbos midaraisa. So the Gemara says the one that's excluded is. Two things, tzitzis and mezuzah. You aren't allowed to tie tzitzis or do any malachas to prepare tzitzis or to put on a mezuzah on Shabbos. Now, the one wants to know why not? Why is it different than all these other 
mitzvahs which you are allowed to? And the Gemara answers simply uh, two attempts. First of all, because these don't have a set time. Tzitzis and mezuzah do not have a set time to be, so it doesn't have to be done on Shabbos. So the Gemara says, what do you mean? That makes it worse. You have to do it every time. It's not limited to one time. You shouldn't have to do it on Shabbos. If you have a clothing with four corners, or if you have a house, you have to have tzitzis and mezuzah on it on Shabbos. So it, it, it has to be done on Shabbos. So the Gemara says, okay, that's not the reason. The reason is because you don't have to do these mitzvahs at all. It's dependent on having clothing that requires it. and having a house. You can get rid of both those things, and you won't have to do the mitzvah, and therefore you're not obligated to do it on Shabbos. You're not obligated to do it now. You could just get rid of the things which require it, and therefore it's not an obligation on you. Therefore you don't have to do it on Shabbos. Okay, now the Gemara wants to know what are the sources, what are the sources for Rabbi Eliezer, each of these things, you can do their machshin before Shabbos, and we're going to go through the entire list which we just discussed before. So first of all, lulav. The Gemara wants to know, how do you know that you're allowed to do machshin for lulav on Shabbos? That involves cutting the lulav and all those things. So the Gemara says, because in describing the mitzvah of lulav, it says, b'yayim, the next word b'yayim, it is, is to say that you are you are allowed to, to do it any day, Day that it may fall out even on the shops itself. So the Gemara says, What did the Rabbanon, uh, what does that be aimed for? The fact that you're allowed to move it, that it's not mukta, is not a problem because there is no issue of mukta midaraisa. It must be that you're allowed to cut down the lulav and other preparatory things. So the Gemara says, uh, What did the Rabbanon do with the word be aimed? The Gemara answers, That's to teach you that the mitzvah of a lulav applies only during the day and not at night. Now, what does Rabbi Eliezer get that from? The Gemara says, That's from somewhere else. Um, because it says seven days and not seven nights. The Rabbanon can't use that because they say that it, it says Shivas Yamim about Sukkah, the mitzvah of sitting in the Sukkah, but that applies even at night. And therefore, I would think that Lulav also applies at night, even though it says Shivas Yamim, and Rabbi Eliezer is not bothered by that. Now, the Gemara says, why can't you learn from Lulav to Carbon uh, Aimer and Shte'alechem? So the Gemara says he can't because lulav uh, requires four minim. It's an extra strong mitzvah. It has four different parts too, and therefore it's stricter, and it could be that therefore it has the strength to push away Shabbos, but the other ones do not. Now, earlier, the Gemara had asked, maybe you could learn from Shteilachem and Aymer to lulav. The Gemara says you can't because those are karbanas, those are tzorech gavoya, those go in the Mizbech, and therefore they are considered to be stronger mitzvahs in that aspect as well. Okay, now the Gemara goes to the mitzvah of Sukkah. We already understand that you can't learn from Karban Oimer, you can't learn from Shtei you can't learn from Lulav, because it's for meaning, where do you know Oimer? Uh, where do you know the mitzvah of Sukkah from? So the Gemara says, from the phrase Shivas Yamim, it links to Lulav. They have the phrase Shivas Yamim by Lulav and by Sukkah, and therefore we can understand just like Lulav's Machshirin push away Shabbos, Sukkah's preparations also push away Shabbos. Now, why don't we learn from Sukkah to the other things? You can't because Sukkah is extra strong because it applies even during the nights, while all those other mitzvahs don't apply at night. Next, Matzah. Matzah, we can't learn from all the things we've seen before for the same reasons, um, and also from Sukkah because Sukkah applies by night. But how do you know that Matzah, its preparation, the all the malachas involved in preparing it, how do you know that they apply, can be performed on Shabbos, according to Rabbi Elazar. So the Gemara says, there's a link between the halachas of Pesach and the halachas of Sukkot. They both take place on the 15th day of the month, and therefore you can learn it from Sukkah. Now the Gemara says, from matzah, the other things, no, matzah is extra strong because it applies to women. Women are obligated in matzah just as much as men. That is something which is not true for these other mitzvahs. Next on the list is Shoifar. Where do you know that from? You can't from all these other things, like we said, for each of them. They each have their own stringency. Now, how do you know that the Mitzvah of Shoifar pushes away Shabbos to prepare and to make the Shoifar? The Gemara says, because it says, Yoim, to Ruah, Yelchem, extra word Yoim, to teach you that you're allowed to do it even false in Shabbos. And that cannot cannot be teaching you that the blowing is allowed to be performed on Shabbos, because blowing a Shoifar is not a Malacha. It is called a Chachma. We know that you're allowed to do Chachma on Shabbos, you're allowed to do the Sapas, Midarai, so you're allowed to do blowing shayfer, that's called chachma, not malacha. Therefore, it must be teaching me that the malacha is involved in making the shayfer, those are the things you're not allowed to do. Uh, I would think you're not allowed to do on Shabbos, and the word yoyim comes to teach me that. Now, the Rabbanon, who say that you cannot do malacha to prepare a shayfer on Shabbos, what is the word BM used for that is used to teach you that there's only a miss of blowing shayfer during the day, and not during the night? How does Rabbi Lazar know that? Well, he compares the shayfer of Rosh Hashanah to Shabbos, Bonan, Yom Kippur, and Yoivo, and uh, just like that has to be performed during the day, 
Uh, it also has to be, the Shefer of Rosh Hashanah also has to be performed during the day only and not at night. Now, why can't we learn from the preparations of the Shefer of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur to all the other mitzvahs which we saw before? So the Gemara says, Shemar has its own strength. Shefer of Rosh Hashanah brings Klai Yisrael's Zichroinus up to Shemayim for judgment, and the Shefer of Yom Kippur frees all the slaves and to their homes and sets all the fields back to their original owners. Now the Gemara talks about Mila. How do you know that the mitzvah of Mila pushes away Shabbos, according to Rabbi Eliezer, even in its preparations? Of course, we can't learn from everything we've seen so far because of all the reasons we gave why each one is especially strong mitzvah. And then the Gemara explains because in Mila it says, Ubayoim Hashmini, and next door, Bayim, to teach me I'm allowed to do is Machshirin, even on Shabbos. Mila itself, we know you're allowed to do on Shabbos from other sources, which we shall see later. Now, the Gemara says, Why don't we learn from Mila to everything else? Mila is different because it had 13 brisois, one was made with Avram Avinu, and therefore it is a special. Uh, strength, and that might allow it to push away Shabbos, which I can't learn to other mitzvahs. Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland School and is presented by Rabbi Yitzchak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.